Yes. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Boucher? Here. Councilwoman Cadre? Here. Councilwoman Cat? Here. Councilwoman uh, Yunin? Here. Council, um, Councilman Yosef? Here. And Mayor Green? Here. All right, I'd like to start by um, rising for the Pledge of Allegiance. If you can rise, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Please have a seat. First on our agenda is our presentations. Um, First of which is a certificate of appreciation to the mayor and council. Mayor? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, whereas the 31st City Council of the City of Madison Heights has hosted the City of Madison Heights Mock City Council Internship Program on May 9th, 2016. And whereas high school students from both Madison High School and Lamphere High School have chosen to participate in this event, touring the Civic Center, job shadowing municipal department heads, participating in hands-on demonstrations of public safety work, and taking the roles of the mayor, mayor pro tem, and city council members at a mock city council meeting. Now therefore be it resolved that the mock city council wishes to convey their thanks to Mayor Brian C. Hartwell, Mayor Pro Tem Mark Bliss, and Council Members Richard Clark, Robert Corbett, Robert Gettings, Marjean Scott, and David Soltis, as well as City Manager Ben Myers, City Clerk Cheryl Prince, and the City Department Heads for their participation and guidance in bringing an understanding of our local government as community leaders and policy makers to the students of this community. All right. Thank you. I'd like to present this to our mayor, Brian Hartwell. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. All right. Next on our agenda, I would like to present oh, he's behind. A certificate to the National Animal Control Officers Week? Yes, Your Honor. Whereas when a call for, ma for animal control services is requested, the prompt response of the animal control officer is very important for the protection of human life and the welfare of helpless animals and pets that are rescued from injury, disease, harm, and inhumane treatment. And whereas our animal control officer provides a number of services to this community, including responding to domestic animal calls and complaints, checking the welfare of pets, inspecting pet stores and other animal facilities, catching and returning loose pets, ensuring pets are properly vaccinated and licensed, investigating complaints and animal bites, responding to calls on wildlife animals, and moving wildlife to other locations for their safety. And whereas our animal control officer is a hardworking member of the Madison Heights Police Department and is dedicated to the service of animal control needs in the community. And whereas this week of appreciation recognizes and honors, and honors the animal control officer and volunteers of the city of Madison Heights. Now therefore be it resolved that the Mock City Council of Madison Heights declares the week of May 8th through May 14, 2016 to be National Animal Control Officer Appreciation Week in Madison Heights in honor of the men and women whose diligence, caring, and protection of animals help keep our city, citizens, and animals safe. And Your Honor, I believe Police Chief Haynes is here to accept yes. the proclamation. Agenda, um, the approval of the agenda. Are there any additions? <coughs> Seeing no, as there no are, additions, Your Honor. All right. Seeing as there are none, are there any deletions? None, Your Honor. All right. Moving on then, we're moving on to order of business A, business licenses initial. The first for Treat Dreams, a food preparation business at 1227 East 10 Mile Road. And the second for World Class Institute of Martial Arts, a martial arts school at 27707 John R. Road. What's the wish of counsel? Your Honor. Yes. I move that we approve Treat Dreams, a food preparation business at 1227 East 10 Mile Road. All right. Is there a second? Second. 
Okay. Motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Boucher and second by Councilwoman Kadri. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion is approved. Seeing as there are no temporary seasonal or non-commercial business licenses, we'll now move on to B, public hearings. For a special approval at 1604 East 14 Mile Road, the proposed sales of new and used wheelchair accessible vans. Yes, Your Honor, special approval has been requested by Mobility Works to allow sales and service of new and used wheelchair accessible vans. The proposed use requires special approval in the M1 Light Industrial District. Only the larger building facing 14 Mile will be utilized by the proposed use. The smaller storage building will be used for warehousing by the former business on the site and is not part of this request. The applicant proposes that internal parking of all vehicles awaiting service overnight and 19 exterior vehicle display specs, uh, spaces are shown on the plans. The proposed parking and the display areas meet the minimum ordinance requirements. Uh, the proposed hours of operation of the business are Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. Weekend and evening hours will be by appointment only. And finally, the site plan review committee has reviewed the plan and all of their comments have been addressed. Okay, thank you. I'd like to open this to a public discussion. Is there any public discussion on this? Seeing as there is none, I will now move on to reports on the agenda of interest to parties in the audience. Oh. Mayor Green. Pardon? Mayor Green. Yes. Okay, first uh, I would suggest you close the hearing to the public. Okay. And then before you move on to the next item, ask what the wish of council is regarding the special use approval. Thank you. I'd like to close the hearing of, to the public then. Now, what is the wish of council? Madam Mayor. Yes. I motion to approve the special approval at 1604 East 14 Mile Road, proposed sales of new and used wheelchair accessible vans. All right, thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right. Motion made by Councilwoman Yunin and seconded by Councilwoman Cott. Is there any discussion? Seeing as there is none, the motion is approved. Oh, Madam Mayor. Oh, pardon. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the motion is approved. Next, we're moving on to um, reports on the agenda of interest to parties in the audience. If you'd like to come up, I ask for your name and address for the record. Is there anything of interest to the audience? It appears we have someone to speak. Your Honor and Council. Hi there. Good evening tonight. Good evening. I am uh, John Q. Public, 123 Anytime Street. <laughs> <laughs> the comment that I have tonight is, is that I pay way too much in taxes and I don't get enough for those taxes. What do you plan to do about that? Um. Well, we're actually just working on our budget right now. Um, as you can see, it might not be going directly back to you what you pay in taxes, but you can see it around your city. Um, we can accept what any suggestions that you have, any ways that we can return it back to you, but I do suggest that you take a look at the things around your city and see the improvements that are being made. Thank you. Thank you. Any other uh, comments for discussion? All right, seeing as there are none, I'd like to move on to item C of the agenda, communications. Um, Madison District Public Schools would have a request to use Rosie's Park. Yes, Your Honor. The Madison School District has requested permission to use Rosie's Park on Saturday, May 21st from 8 in the morning till 1 in the afternoon to hold the 5K Walk for a Cure fundraiser event to benefit the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Staff and I recommend the Council approve this event subject to compliance with the Council's policy on uniform insurance requirements for special events. All right. And what is the wish of Council? Your Honor. Yes. I move that we approve Madison District Public Schools request to use Rosie's Park. All right, is there a second? Second. second. Your Honor, could I ask that uh, uh, that you ask the mayor, uh, maker and support if they would add the condition that it's contingent upon the council's policy? Okay. Would you add the conditions onto this policy? Yes. All right. 
And is there a second that also follows these conditions? Second. All right. Motion made by Mayor Pro Tem Boucher and seconded by Councilman Youssef, adding in the conditions to it. Um, is there any discussion on the topic? Madam Mayor? Yes. What are some of the compliances that Madison District would have to comply with? Mayor Green? Yes. Uh, the, the uniform insurance requirements for special events requires any party that's using city property for its events uh, to provide insurance, which names the city as an additional insured, and also to sign an indemnification defend and hold harmless agreement so that if someone gets injured as a result of the, the 5K walk, the 5K walk or run, uh, that the city would be covered in terms of insurance as well as any out-of-pocket expense based on the indemnification. Okay. Did that answer the question for you? Yes. All right. Is there any more discussion on the topic? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing as there are none, the motion is approved. I'd like to move next on to next, the next item of the agenda, D, reports. The first for City Attorney, the Lanphier Public Schools and Lanphier Athletic Booster Club is hosting a charitable gaming license revolu resolution. And the second, the DPS director um, for the Red Oaks Youth Soccer Complex Use Agreement. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, uh, in regard to the, the first one, um, the Lanphier Public Schools, through, the, through their bo booster club, has submitted the requested documents as outlined in the city's administrative policy in order to obtain a local governing body resolution from the city, which is required by the state for the group's charitable gaming license to hold their Texum, Texas Hold'em Millionaire Fundraising uh, event uh, in Troy this June. Based on the group fulfilling these policy requirements, the city attorney's office, staff, and I recommend that council adopt the resolution recognizing the Lamphere Public School District as a nonprofit organization for the purpose of obtaining a charitable gaming license. All right. What is the wish of council? Your Honor. Yes. Um, Councilwoman Unit. It oh, was her. That was me. That was me. Oh, that was oh. Councilwoman Cott. I motion to approve that council adopt the resolution recognizing the Lanphier Public School District as a nonprofit <coughs> organization for the purpose of obtaining a charitable gaming license. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. The motion was made by Councilwoman Cott and seconded by Councilwoman Cotri. Um, is there any discussion on the topic? Seeing as there is, no, there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion is approved then. Um, just to clarify, is that for both um, Lanphier Public Schools and for the DPS director? Your Honor, no, that was just the first, okay. first thing. Then moving on to the DPS director for the Red Oaks Youth Soccer Complex Use Agreement. Yes, ma'am. Uh, City Council has approved use agreements with the Madison Heights Youth Soccer Association covering the last six years of their operation from 2010 through December 2015. Staff and I recommend that Council approve a new three-year extension agreement with a term ending on December 31, 2018 and authorize the mayor and clerk to sign on behalf of the city. And I would note that all of the terms and conditions remain effect from the old agreement, except that they have increased their annual payment uh, from $500 to $1,000. And uh, this agreement has been approved by the soccer board. All right, what's the wish of Council? Yeah. Your Honor. Uh, Councilman Youssef. I motion to approve the DPS Director of Red Oaks Youth Soccer Complex Youth Agreement. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, uh, Councilwoman Scott. The motion was made by Councilman Youssef and seconded by Councilwoman Scott. Is there any discussion on the topic? Ms. Madam Mayor? Yes. I would ask that the maker of the motion include uh, to authorize the mayor and clerk to sign on behalf of the city, and if support agrees, I would ask support to do that as well. All right, thank you. Is there any other discussion on the topic? All right, all in favor say aye. Madam aye. Mayor. Yes. Before there's a vote, I would like the maker of the motion to acknowledge whether he agrees with the uh, change and <laughs> whether the support agrees. Okay, 
Um, Councilman Youssef, Councilwoman Cott, do you agree with the changes that have been made? I do. Okay. <laughs> Moving yeah, on then. Let's ask if support agrees. Okay. Um, Does support agree? Who is the support on them? Councilwoman Cott. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is approved then. Um, moving on next, um, F, bid awards and purchases for Fire Chief Ambulance. Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Fire Department Rescue 713, a 2006 ambulance that has reached the end of its service life with uh, 79,000 miles, is scheduled for replacement in this year's budget. In March of this year, a committee was formed to investigate ambulance manufacturers, design configuration, and the equipment for the upcoming vehicle purchase. This committee consisted of the motor pool supervisor, three firefighter paramedics, and the fire chief. The committee visited neighboring communities and a local vendor show to gather information and ideas on ambulances that are currently in service and to evaluate various companies' design features, workmanship, reliability, and warranties. The group also focused on the chassis type, quality of construction, overall size, maneuverability, compartment design, and equipment storage. After careful consideration, the committee was unanimous that Wheeled Coach provides the city with the best ambulance possible while maintaining our fiscal responsibility. The city of Southfield recently purchased four of these Wheeled Coach ambulances and was very satisfied with their purchase. We will be able to use the interlocal purchasing contract with the Houston Galveston Area Council, uh, approved by council in 2003 and re-signed earlier this year toward this purchase. Emergency Vehicles Plus is the authorized dealer for Wheeled Coach in the state of Michigan. Over the past three months, staff have worked closely with Emergency Vehicles Plus to design an ambulance that meets the needs of our residents and the city. The committee has spent considerable time reviewing all aspects of the vehicle design, the build specifications, and the pre-build work order in an effort to ensure the city receives the most efficient and cost-effective ambulance possible. The committee focused on the design, on the core function of the vehicle, which is going to result in a new ambulance that's four and a half feet shorter than the current ambulance fleet, which makes it lighter more fuel and more, more fuel efficient. The wheelbase decreased by three feet, giving the drivers greater maneuverability without affecting the interior patient care area. The design also incorporates a new interior and exterior compartment layout, a larger countertop work area, a CPR seat, and a stretcher lifting system. Staff and I recommend the council award the purchase of the new wheeled coach ambulance from Emergency Vehicles Plus under the Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program in an amount of $243,485 and funds are budgeted and available for this purchase. All right, what is the wish of council? Madam Mayor. Yes. I motion to approve the purchase of a 2014 wheeled coach ambulance from the qualified bidder, Emergency Vehicle Plus, in the amount of 243485 through the Houston Galveston Area Council Cooperative Purchasing Program. All right, is there a second? Second. Yes. Motion made by Councilwoman Yunin and seconded by Councilwoman Cott. Madam Mayor. Yes. Um, is this being taken out of our budget? No, this was allotted for in our budget. I have a question. Yes. So is it, do they need to improve? Or why is this, why do you feel this is needed? Um, it's needed because the ambulance that we had before has just, it's run out of its life. It has many miles and it needs to be filtered out before it needs a lot more maintenance and repair. How many total ambulances do we have? Um, City Your Honor, I'm gonna ask Fire Chief Lolito to address that question. Your Honor, I couldn't have said any better than, my, than myself, so that was perfect. Thank you. But to address the Councilwoman's uh, answer, we have three ambulances. Two are frontline and one is reserve that we use for backup. Okay. Um, is there any other discussion on the topic? Madam Mayor? Yes. What is the average life expectancy for an ambulance? Um, I feel like that's also a question from the Fire Chief. Your Honor, we have a nine-year replacement uh, schedule on those, so this is, this is at its end of his service life. All right, and I do have a question for you. Yes. Um, I know it's mentioned that this new ambulance is smaller. Does that make it any, does that make its life expectancy any shorter if it's less durable now? 
No, not at all. It just makes it more, the functionality of the, uh, makes it more user friendly for the paramedics. Okay, Thank Your you. Honor. I have another question. How long did this ambulance last? The one that we're replacing? How long have you had? Nine years. Nine years? Nine years, yes. So, so it was, um, I'm sorry, it was six years as a front uh, line uh, apparatus, and it was three years in reserve. So do you assume that every nine years you're gonna have to buy a new vehicle? Yes, every nine years the, an ambulance will be replaced. So I think that's something we should be prepared for. All right. Is there any more discussion on the topic? Yes, Your Honor, I just wanna to add to that. That's a very good question, and, and our, our five-year capital improvement plan has a vehicle replacement schedule going out at least five years and then with a replacement cycle beyond that for every vehicle in the fleet. All right. Is that all of the discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, the motion is approved then. Moving on next, G, ordinances. For ordinance number 2110, the use of tobacco by minors ordinance amendment for the first reading. Yes, Your Honor, council is being asked to consider an ordinance amendment that provides that a person under 18 years of age shall not purchase, possess, or use a tobacco product, vapor product, or an alternative nicotine product. Similarly, the ordinance provides that no person in, person in the city shall sell, give to, or in any way furnish tobacco products, vapor products, or alternative nicotine products to a person under 18 years of age. A user is subject to civil penalties, whereas the seller is subject to criminal penalties. The ordinance amendment has been reviewed and approved by the city attorney's office and police chief, and a letter of support has also been furnished by the Community Family Coalition. It should be noted that a similar bill was passed by our state legislature, but vetoed by the governor. If our state government ever approved such legislation, the city could at that time adjust or reamend our ordinance so as not to conflict with state law. Staff, the city attorney's office and I recommend approval of this important ordinance on the first reading. All right, what is the wish of council? Your Honor. Yes? I motion to approve ordinance number 2110, use of the use of tobacco by minors. Ordinance amendment, first reading. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, motion made by Councilwoman Kadri and seconded by Councilman Yusuf. Is there any discussion on this topic? Your Honor? Yes. I have a few questions. All right. Well, maybe for the city manager. Isn't this already illegal by the government? Mr. Mayor? Madam Mayor? Yes. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I think... <laughs> <laughs> old, ha old habits, <laughs> old habits die hard. Um, I think the question is is should be directed uh, to my office because it was a legal question rather than to the city manager. Um, as mentioned by the city manager in his comments, the state legislature was considering a bill just like the one that's before the council tonight, and um, and it didn't pass both houses. Uh, didn't pass the Senate and the House of Representatives, and it kind of left a gap in the law, which is why the city is proposing this ordinance amendment to, to cover that gap. And I should mention also to council that this is a very relevant topic in the news because the federal government within the last week or so has indicated that they're going to be regulating businesses that sell uh, these types of uh, nicotine products or alternative nicotine products. So this is intended to kind of close the gap here in Madison Heights. And maybe it'll send a message to the state that they need to do something about it as well, if council were to adopt the ordinance. Your Honor, if I may continue. So what different impact will you think this will have on society? Um, I think this will have the impact that we're implementing it. Like the city attorney has said, it's not something that has been established on the state level yet. I sure, I'm sure it's going to pass through legislation soon. But the fact that we're implementing it here in our city is it making it obvious that we don't want minors to be using tobacco products, even if it's a new form of tobacco. And one more question, just to end it. I, I do agree with this, but it's a simple fact that in different cultures, such as like Arabic, Chaldean, they smoke hookah in their own houses. How can you know, how can you manage that? Like how can you tell them what to do on their own time if they're doing it in their house? Like how will you know? Um, I think it just comes down to the fact that they will have to acquire these tobacco products from somewhere. And that goes back to the businesses, which there is, um, 
It's specified in the ordinance that businesses aren't allowed to sell to anyone under the age of 18, no matter what, and I think the businesses eventually will be the final say. I mean, if a minor wants to try and possess tobacco, the business is going to be what's trying to stop them and saying, well, I won't sell to you because it's in violation of city ordinance. To end on a good note, I have a question for the police chief. All right. Your Honor, while he's walking up, I, I would also add that hookah is an activity that, at least from a commercial standpoint, is also regulated by the state of Michigan. Thank you. How will you enforce this uh, new rule? Uh, the new rule will be enforced similar to how we enforce uh, tobacco products currently. Um, every year we do at least one sting operation where we send an, a minor in undercover and we have officers that accompany the minor into each and every one of the stores to ensure that they're in compliance and not selling tobacco or these new products to minors. Thank you. Your you're Honor. Welcome. Yes. Can I ask what exactly the penalty would be if someone under the age of 18 would be caught with tobacco? Um, Madam Mayor? Yes. Maybe I can take a stab at that. Right. On a first offense, on a first offense, it's a, for those that minors that possess it, is a hundred dollars civil infraction. On a second offense, it's five hundred dollars uh, in terms of also a civil infraction. But for the business that sells to a minor, the penalty is a ninety-day misdemeanor. So it's a criminal offense if the business knowingly sells to a minor without ascertaining whether the person is underage. Thank you. All right, I would like to mention that I think um, future hearings should try to amend that businesses in violation of this should not just receive a 90-day misdemeanor, but if it's happened multiple times, they should um, risk getting their license taken away to sell tobacco products. Okay. Your Honor. Yes. I would like to um, ask, what are the steps we would have to take to amend this ordinance? Madam Mayor? Yes. Um, if the ordinance is adopted, we'd have to go through a similar process to the one we're going through by having an ordinance amendment proposed where council would have to approve it on first and second reading. Your Honor, the concept of first reading really means that you're adopting it on the name and title basis. When you adopt it on the second reading, you're actually adopting the, the official wording of the ordinance. Correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. Is there any other discussion on the topic? Madam Mayor? Yes. Are there any groups that will help prevent violation of this ordinance? Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm sure the city manager can ask, but I know there are um, some groups in the city, like the Family uh, Coalition, that fights towards making sure that youth are able to express themselves in different ways that don't lead towards tobacco use or other drug use. Your Honor, yes, that, that's correct. I just wanted to mention that the Community Family Co Coalition has worked collaboratively with the police department in, in the past ter in terms of enforcement and youth assistance, both very helpful. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion? Your Honor? Yes? I, want, I would want to move for a, like a second reading. All right. Like make an alternative, a harsh pen penalty, because I feel like this doesn't do as much as it would, like, if we enforced it, I feel like it would make an impact, but I feel like we should just have harsher p penalty. Your Honor, uh, since this is, uh, this is only approval on the first reading, uh, you don't really need to amend your motion or your vote on the first reading, but staff could come back with an alternate version of the ordinance for council's consideration on second reading. Absolutely. Um, any final discussion on it? All right. Um, Seeing as there's no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Is there aye. any opposed? All right, then the motion is approved. Um, moving on next are minutes. The first for regular city council meeting minutes for April 25th, 2016. Um, does the council wish to approve the city council meeting minutes for April 25th, 2016? Madam Mayor? Yes. I motion to approve regals, regular, uh, regular city council meeting minutes, April 25th, 2016. All right, is there a second? Second. second. All right, Councilwoman Cott. The motion was made by Councilman, Councilwoman Yunin and seconded by Councilwoman Cott. Um, is there any discussion on the topic? All right, all in favor then say aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is approved then. All right. Um, it appears we don't have any more items on our agenda, so I'd just like to um, 
allow council members to go around and make any final remarks that they'd like to say. Um, start with Councilwoman Kadri. I would just like to thank everybody for having us today and, tour and I would like to thank the city clerk, city clerk for touring us around and thank you for the fire chief and police chief, right? <laughs> for showing us the offices and yeah. All right. Oh, Mina? Yeah. I just want to say I'm thankful for this opportunity and what our mayor said. I think that like the harsh pe penalty should be a license removal because if they do it one time, who knows if they're not going to do it again. You can't always take someone's word. So I do agree with her on that. Absolutely. Um, Councilwoman Yonan. Oh, I mean, Vanessa already said it, or Councilwoman Kadri, but just thank you for having us here and it was definitely a memorable experience. Councilwoman Cott. I would like to thank everyone for the opportunity to take part in City Council and um, just to tell everyone if anybody ever gets the chance to do it, you should definitely take that chance because it's definitely a memorable experience. Most certainly. And uh, Councilman Yusuf. I would also like to thank the City Council for giving us this opportunity. All right. Um, I have a few more things I'd like to say. Um, Specifically, I'd like to mention uh, some of the data presented by Councilman Soltis during the earlier meeting. Um, I think poverty on a local level is something that everyone fears, and it's sort of something we don't want to talk about just because we don't want to think that even in the city of Madison Heights that our neighbors could be struggling to make their ends meet, that they could be struggling to keep food on the table. and. If you are in poverty, you know someone that's in poverty, know that it does start with you, that you're able to overcome it, it just takes effort, but you can't do it alone. No one can do it alone, certainly. And I move that anyone who knows a business owner or if you are a business owner, you, um, you try and help out those that are suffering. Um, employment is certainly a way to overcome poverty, but also I know there are businesses that will clean up someone before they go to a job application, just offer those services to help overcome poverty in their own community, and I certainly recommend that people partake in that. It's just a simple way to help out the people around you. And um, I'd like to thank Joseph Vitale, Director of Public Services, and Corey Almas of Streets and Facility Coordinator. I got to, I had the privilege of touring the DPS earlier, and they're really the unthanked heroes of the city. I mean, the 2014 flood, everybody was affected. I personally was affected, my basement was completely destroyed, and the DPS worked incredibly hard to make sure all the garbage was picked up, make sure people fix everything that was wrecked in the flood. Everything that happens in the winter is when the roads get bad. They work really hard to make sure that it's fixed. They get salt on the roads as soon as they can, and um, they just really do a lot. So I strongly recommend that anyone call up the DPS sometime this week, just say thank you for something that you know they've helped you with. And I'd just like to thank Mayor Hartwell and the rest of council for allowing us to have this experience. It's been a truly wonderful experience to work and see just everything that goes on behind the scenes in our city. All right. Adjourn the, the meeting is adjourned.